NACP. Nancy Hernandez, the president of the League of United Latin American Citizens Council 339. Yogur Aguilar, president of LULAC Council 354. Adeline Green of the Co uh, Coalition for Dismantling Racism. Um, and James Hall, the CEO of the Urban League of Racine and Kenosha. So on their behalf, since they can't be here, uh, we wanted to join the press con We merged our press conference with the mayors because we wanted to let the community know that the civil rights organizations and other organizations in Kenosha are very concerned, and we're here to assist the family. We're here to support the community. Uh, we are here to, um, to, to work with the mayor and our elected officials and the Kenosha Police Department to see that um, those um, held accountable are uh, brought to our, our um, you know, that we have a fair and, and equal process uh, during the investigation that's going to be an independent investigation. So our civil rights organizations are here. We are monitoring the situation. We'll continue to give updates to the community. And um, we, we offer our deepest, deepest sympathy to the family of, of um, Jake Blake. Um, not sure, uh, you know, what the status is there, but um, that's the purpose of today, to unite the community, to support the community, and let you know that our civil rights organizations are here for you. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. At this time, I'd call in the district attorney. Thank you, everyone. Um, I, I just want to note on this sort of tragic day, you know, the circumstances that this community has where uh, one of our individuals was tragically shot. Uh, now the community is uh, expressing anger and uh, rage and um, the healing has not yet been able to begin in our community. So I want to talk briefly about the process by which we now try to get justice for all the parties who are involved in this case, and that includes not only Mr. Blake, but uh, the officers at the scene as well. That process um, is mandated by statute, so the way that process uh, works is to specifically have a chance for people to have an investigation that is neutral, that is fair, and that is thorough. And so what happens now is, by statute, uh, the KPD, the Kenosha Police Department, has asked for, um, has asked for the uh, Division of Criminal Investigation, DCI, to be uh, the investigating agency. We are um, fortunate that the investigators at DCI are persons who are the most experienced in the entire state at being able to conduct investigations of officer-involved shootings. They are also a completely independent uh, agency. And so what happens right now is that investigation has begun, but it's at its earliest stages. Uh, when that investigation is completed, and I'll, allow, uh, I'll ask the Attorney General, who's here, to uh, talk to you about that part of the process, uh, then the investigation results, so the materials gathered, will be given to the Kenosha District Attorney's Office. Um, I have um, been, and, and at that point we'll review those things, and really the district attorney's office is tasked with, um, with something very narrow. We're asked to make two determinations based on the evidence that is presented. One, did any officer in this case commit any crimes? And two, are there any crimes that we believe were committed that we can prove beyond a reasonable doubt? Uh, if those two uh, things are concluded as a yes, uh, then criminal charges would be brought at the end of that process. If for some reason that is not the determination, then in the spirit of transparency, what is then demanded and, which, and what will happen is that all of the materials that the district attorney's office reviewed will then be immediately available to the public so that they'll be able to make their own conclusions. And the district attorney's office, in fact, will, in writing, explain any conclusions that we get uh, out of the evidence. Uh, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the federal prosecutors, have reached out offering their assistance today. It's my hope that they will do a parallel civil rights investigation so the feds uh, also uh, police uh, uh, and prosecute uh, any alleged police misconduct. And so I'm hoping they will do an investigation that takes place at the same time. 
which will allow this community to heal sooner because independent uh, prosecuting agencies will be able to make determinations at the same time about whether any criminal charges will um, be produced. Uh, the Attorney General's Office has also reached out. Their prosecuting uh, agency has also reached out uh, offering assistance, and I hope that I'll be able to get their assistance to review some of the evidence as well. Uh, we're going to try to do this as quickly uh, as we can from the District Attorney's Office, uh, but what is necessary for everyone to remember is that um, these kind of huge decisions in a community that's hurting badly as we are today uh, are not decisions that can be made in haste uh, and they are not decisions that can be made before we have the complete information to make, to make fair and just decisions. So we expect to do that. We expect this process to continue. And we ask people to be as patient as they can. Uh, we support all advocacy uh, that is peaceful. Uh, I've had uh, thousands of emails today from people who are quite appropriately expressing uh, their strong feelings about this case. There are people advocating in the streets and doing that peacefully and we also applaud and agree with uh, their, um, their right and their ability to have a real conversation about this case. For the destruction of property. That's not a part of that conversation. And so we ask people for every bit of patience they can muster in these difficult times and appreciate you all being here. All right. Um, artist Tim Mahone, you guys want to add anything to this? Okay. Terrence. Yeah, oh, uh, that's right. Terrence. From Wisconsin Revolution, Terrence Ruther. Terrence, come on up. I just want to make a brief comment and this afternoon. First, I want to thank the mayor, the city of Kenosha, the county, for inviting me to speak. Uh, I'm not an elected official. Uh, I'm a citizen, much like those that you see outside in the streets in this room right now. I understand in the most intimate of ways the anger and the fear and the frustration that we see on our streets. I understand where that need for justice comes from. I applaud those that are exercising their rights, their First Amendment rights, to gather and speak and address the pain in this community. And as difficult as it is, and no, I'm not the black guy at this press conference here to say that. I need lasting change and I need us to engage in this in a way that moves forward. Because all this is great. The attention on this issue helps us drive home that this community needs justice. But a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, these cameras will be gone. Most of these protesters will be gone. But those of us in this city whose loved ones, whose livelihoods, and whose hearts are here will still be here. I need to do everything you can to help us find justice in this case for everyone and a lasting justice for this community. The divisions that we see played out nationally and statewide need to end with this. There is no they or them. This is one community. That needs to end. That's how we find ourselves in these positions and how we find ourselves in this position in this city. We all live minutes from each other, seconds from each other. We are neighbors, and we need to work together during this and moving forward. I thank you for your time. Can I give you your first and last name and your title? Sorry. First name is Terrence, T-E-R-R-A-N-C-E. -R -R -E. Last name is Worthen, W-A-R-T-H-E-N. And uh, I'm not giving any titles right now. I'm just a citizen in the city, and that's thank enough. You. Uh, very quickly, um, Tim. Did you? And then the Attorney General will be the last speaker we have, and then we're going to try to usher everyone out of here um, fairly quickly. Uh, you'll ask questions to the Attorney General because I think that's probably the questions you have to ask. So, 
At this time, um, I, I'd like to introduce uh, the Attorney General of the State of Wisconsin. Oh, I'm sorry, Tim Mahone first. <laughs> this isn't the Attorney General of the State of Wisconsin. No. No. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Mahone. I am a longtime resident here in Kenosha. Born and raised two blocks away <clears throat> from where Mr. Blake was shot. I received a call from my sister and advising me of the situation and immediately came home so that we could do what we normally do and that's come together as a community to protect and watch over our neighborhood, watch over our kids and watch over our families. I want to be very clear uh, that the video was very disappointing, very disturbing, but we don't have all the facts. The Mahone family sends its prayers to the Blake family and his children so that they recover and they heal from the memories and the pain of that awful evening. As you heard earlier, justice will prevail and we have to give justice time to deliver. But I'm a longtime resident here and I'm asking all of you to remain calm I'm asking all of you to protect your children. I'm asking all of you, if you choose to protest peacefully and nonviolently. My mother, Mary Lou, and my father, Arthur, worked very hard so that all of us could live in this community safely and quietly and warmly and protect each other as we play up and down the streets. And when moments like this come, we are to come together to make it better. When moments like these come, we take our time and we're patient and we listen to each other, regardless of your race and your color and your creed. Yes, I'm hurt. So all the civil rights organizations that were here, LULAC, NAACP, the Mahone Fund, the Mahone family, we have the mayor, all our elected officials, County Executive Jim Cruiser, Wirch, Onstead, Tip, they know this community wants to come together and work hard to make this better. Please don't destroy our community. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Please pray that Mr. Blake heals and recovers, and that justice prevails. Thank you. All right. At this time, I do want us to introduce the Attorney General of the State of Wisconsin, Josh Call. Josh? Yeah. Please take them. Good afternoon, everyone. leaders who are here and speaking about the important issues um, that this community is facing. Um, first, I want to start with what the role of the Wisconsin Department of Justice is uh, in the investigation relating to the officer-involved shooting that happened yesterday in Kenosha. Uh, under Wisconsin law, in certain cases, an independent investigating agency is brought in to conduct investigations. Uh, in this case, as in many other cases involving officer-involved shootings, the Wisconsin Department of Justice has been brought in, and our role is to be an independent investigating agency. Uh, we are a statewide law enforcement agency, uh, and our goal is very simple. We are going to vigorously and fully investigate the facts of this case. And in this case, as in any other case that we investigate, our pursuit of justice is going to be unwavering. Now, we don't make the prosecution decision in that, this case. That's a decision that will be made ultimately by District Attorney Gravely. Um, but we will be working closely with his office as additional facts uh, and evidence are uncovered so that we work closely together. Um, we understand that there is a need uh, for this investigation to move swiftly, uh, and our goal is to move swiftly with this in investigation, but we are only going to do so to the extent that it is consistent with protecting the integrity of this investigation because it is vital that we get uh, as full and thorough an investigation as possible 
so we can pursue justice fully in this case. Um, I also want to mention I saw that uh, Governor Evers has declared uh, a special session. Um, it is vital that people who have been speaking up for months now around the state be heard. It is vital that our elected officials hear directly from people. It's, we have some of our elected officials here, and I'm sure that they will be listening to people's voices. Those voices need to be represented in the debates that we have, and we do need to reform our criminal justice system. So I am hopeful that we will have many, many voices from around the state at those discussions. But my commitment to you is that the Department of Justice will fully and thoroughly investigate this case. Um, so with that, uh, I wanted to open it up for questions. Can you tell us, sir, was Mr. Blake armed? Uh, well, I'm not going to comment on the details of the investigation for a few reasons. Um, first and foremost, uh, because this is an ongoing investigation, we don't want to comment uh, on the details in a way that might impact the integrity of the investigation. Um, we will release certain information as the investigation moves forward, um, but always we're, our first priority is protecting the integrity of the investigation. The identities of the officers have not been released, but can you tell us how many officers are part of this investigation? We have a standard protocol that we follow for identifying officers uh, as well as uh, victims in these cases, and we follow that protocol for a couple reasons. One is to, again, protect the integrity of the investigation, and two is because we also provide victim services, uh, and we're able to do that better uh, as long as we follow this protocol. So. Although that information has not yet been released, it will be released in the days ahead. Are you uh, aware of um, the victim's uh, medical condition right now? Uh, I'm only aware of what has been uh, disclosed publicly, which is that he's in serious condition. Can you say how many officers are on, are, uh, on administrative leave right now as the investigation goes forward? That would be a question for the Kenosha Police Department. Um, I don't know the answer to that. This might be a question for the mayor, but in terms of body cameras, the police department, do they have? The police department does not have body cameras at this time. It's scheduled in 2022 the purchase of body cameras. It's been in the budget for a while. And it's uh, part of the issue has been in dealing with the states and getting the states to change the uh, law and how much, how long you have to hold the uh, material. And so they did make that modification, which makes it so that it's uh, financially affordable for communities to actually have the body cams and be able to maintain the material for the length of time necessary. So sorry, it's in the budget for 2022? 2022. Is there a dash cam video? Yes, there are dash. Uh, the cars do have uh, video. Is there video, dash cam video of this incident? Of this incident? I, I, have, I would have to check with you to be honest with you on that. And I'm not going to be speaking to the, the details of the ongoing investigation, but again, our, our goal is to provide information where we can to the public, but um, but our first priority has to be protecting the integrity investigation. Is the National Guard being called in? The National Guard um, at this time has been called in and will be. Is there another curfew for tonight? Yes, there is. The curfew okay. is from uh, 8 to 7. Mayor, there was video last night of an uh, officer being struck by, a, I think, a brick. That's correct. Uh, do you know the condition of that officer? That right? officer is doing, is doing well. Can we unmute the mics? I'm sorry, thank you. That officer is doing well and is recovering. Was it just one officer injured? One officer that was injured, uh, in a sense, seriously, yes. Can you say how many people, if any, were arrested last night during the protest? Uh, that I could not tell you. The, um, we can get you that number shortly, though. Were you injured last night, Mr. Mayor? No, I was not. I was the little bit of a crowd. How do you get to a point where those who are protesting outside who are clearly very angry and police and city officials can actually hear each other? Well, one of the things the city has been doing is um, have been working with the faith-based organizations in an attempt to deal with racism throughout the community and the issues of how that impacts the community. So in how it impacts employment, how it impacts um, police community relationships, how it impacts education. So we've been putting together a package on that and have put, been working on it for quite a while. And we're fairly close to having it um, launched. Actually, it was one of the reasons that I had some of the clergy coming today, because they have been taking the lead 
on that because I think it's important for people to understand that the community has, no community is, is I guess my old phrase that I use to love is that a community is only as strong as its weakest neighborhood. And I think that's with people too. If we don't work together, it's not going to work at all. So we need to find ways to communicate, find ways of being um, compassionate with each other and willing to listen to each other. And that's, I think, probably the toughest part we're dealing with right now. People are mad. People are upset. And there's a lot of reasons for that, a lot of good reasons for that. But in the end, the only way this country and this community survives is if we learn to listen. And right now, I'm afraid we're having trouble doing that. So part of the goal was to bring the clergy in, bring in activists, bring in the different individuals throughout the community, and have them work with us in trying to solve the problem. I was in touch with a, a gentleman from the Department of Revenue, or Department of Revenue, Department of Justice, Federal Department of Justice, to come in and work with us um, in our community. And he has put in the request to do so. So hopefully that will be another individual to come in and bring resources to the community and help the community to heal. I, I think in, in the case of Tim, you, you hit it on the head. You know, the community needs to heal. We need to understand that the people are hurting. We also need to make sure people understand that, that you have to listen to each other. Without that, nothing works. Can you just, I think, I think people, question. because I think people will be curious, when was the decision made to switch the press conference from the park to come in here? How did that um, decision play out? It basically played out because the situation, they weren't sure of the safety of everyone at the time. And so I didn't want to take any chances. As you see, I've, I'm not one of those who's necessarily shy of going into a crowd. But I have other people here, and I don't want to create a problem for anybody. So from my perspective, um, it just made sense to do that, and so that's why. Mayor, can you pronounce your last name? Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, Are you kind of, you, can you a name like mine? Everyone knows. <laughs> it's Antaramian. But if you want to pronounce it correctly, it's Antaramian. So Antaramian works. Okay. Okay, everybody, we're, um, the police will now kind of escort everyone out of the building to get you back to where you need to be safely. safely. You okay? You got it? My 51-year-old is like that.